it's been 30 years since we had this level of of change in our um, in our tax structure, and the uh, the the I mean, and here is the question, and you know, uh, we're talking to Dave uh, David Dayan on this program, uh, this episode. He's got a take on this that this is going to uh, set up Democrats with a, a a good opportunity to have a very bold agenda when they get back into office because the Republicans have basically carved out, uh, you know, $1.5 trillion over 10 years that is primarily um, a, 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 you know, revenue that is coming from that, that, that a whole that is uh, there because they gave tax cuts to millionaires, essentially, to very wealthy people. And all you got to do is fill that back up. And all of a sudden you got one point five trillion dollars uh, over 10 years to spend on something like uh, single payer health care or free college, whatever it is. And so it's fairly convenient. Is that your take on this? Because there's also the take that, hey, you know, people are going to at least in the short run uh, because, you know, these tax cuts expire for um the vast number of people expires over uh, the next seven or so years for the dollar figure amounts uh, that doesn't expire. Right. Because the corporations got these taxes and pass through, uh, got these tax cuts. So what, what is your take? I mean, what what happens next? What happens in the short term in 2018 as we look uh, forward to next year? What happens in 2019? I mean, so on. Well, I think yeah, I, I, you know, agree with with Dave that there's a you know, that this pot of money should be available. You know what I mean? I mean, this is just something they've created. It should be something that we can take back, and the whole deficit discussion, you know, should be set aside considering what they've done, <laughs> that they actually have created uh, this amount of, of deficit spending with their own bill. Now, whether or not that's actually going to happen, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's no consistency in the Republican Party, so they're definitely uh, – going to pretend like they never did what they did, and the arguments will come from corporations, very wealthy donors uh, will be pushing back hard. So, I mean, raising taxes is always difficult, as Barack Obama found when he was having a hard time even getting, allowing the Bush tax cuts to expire. Um, so, you know, this is this is never going to be an easy, easy lift, but I do think that it's possible. I mean, we seem to be going through a major change, and here's one of the things I find so interesting is that, you know, we've been watching this, and you and I have talked about this a bunch. Since the election of 2018, there's been a ton of analysis about what the, you know, if there's a potential realignment of the of the two parties. And one of the things that's been happening for a very long time and seems to be speeding up at warp speed since Trump was elected is this movement of college-educated white people in the suburbs and around in urban areas who have always traditionally voted Republican. Now, these people tend to be more socially liberal anyway, but they've been more, um, you know, they stayed Republicans because they saw them as fiscally responsible. And also, frankly, that they were going to get a little something-something when the Republicans get in, right? There'd be some tax cuts, and it would benefit them. These, a lot of these people are professionals. They're people who make pretty good money. Well, by the way, this tax bill that the Republicans just put through, it screws them. <laughs> those people and these are the kind of people by the way they don't you know they don't look at the standard deduction and go oh goody it's twice as big as it was last year you know like people like like me mm. you know real middle class people these are people who have kind of sophisticated views of they own property they pay taxes they have their you know various you know sort of complicated ways of dealing with their income because it's substantial and they you know they work it through with accountants those people are going to notice. They already are. In fact, I read an article about all these these traders, these Wall Street guys, who are livid. They're not. They looked at the bill and went, "Oh, this is going to only going to millionaires and billionaires." And these guys, they're wealthy. They've got tons of money, but they are going to be paying more in taxes, or at the very least, getting a very tiny little little taste, and then it's going to disappear within a year or two. And they, these are the kind of people who notice that stuff. They see it. They are aware of it. So they're, and they're watching, you know, what if those who, you know, the kind of Ward Cleaver types who may have been looking at it, you know, going, well, I, I'm a fiscal conservative. I think the government right. should be, you know, we should always balance the budget and that kind of thing. They're looking at this going, what is wrong? These people have gone nuts. 
So this just exacerbates a Republican problem with a certain demographic, which there are quite a few, and it's a demographic that will make the difference for Republicans going forward if they completely move over to the Democratic Party and go, well, geez, at least these guys aren't insane. So that is something that I think we need to keep an eye on. You know, we've been watching the white working class with a magnifying glass ever since last November. We can, you know, the news organizations go out and, you know, like they're going on some anthropological mission out into the Amazon to find what are they thinking today, you know. Well, they still like Trump, and they like him for the same reason they always liked him, and that's because he's a racist and because he wants to build a wall, and he sort of hates all the people they hate. So that's not going to change. It's this other group that you have to start keeping your eye on. And in the elections in the off year so far, that's the group that has moved from the from the Republican column into the independent voting Democrat and voting and moving into the Democratic Party itself. So anyway, they may be cutting their own throats with this bill by by you know making it so heavily tilted toward their millionaire and billionaire donor class. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, uh, there's been I, I've seen a lot of speculation that goes uh, both ways, frankly, uh, because um, there's going to be less withholding. Um, and in many respects, I mean, I think, uh, you know, uh, Dan may have made this point. You're going to have less withholding through the 2018 election. And then all that money is going to be clawed back when people do their taxes in 2019. Uh, for the the 2018. So, um, and, you know, and I feel like we're, we're seeing that with, with Paul Ryan going out there and saying, we're not going to touch Medicare or Social Security. And you can almost hear him say before the 2018 election. <laughs> uh, but he did say, you know, we're going to put there. I mean, they're talking about moving people from welfare to work. So this dynamic where you um, are getting some uh, meager assistance if you cannot, uh, if you don't have a job, maybe you're getting the food stamps or whatnot. And the idea that the, the plan is, right, or disability for that matter, we're going to, uh, if you can't work or you can't find work and you are getting uh, some type of assistance from uh, society, uh, we want to tell you that you've got to go back to work to continue to get that assistance, right? Like this is... Um, this is a major, major, right? This is a catch 22, uh, the, uh, exactly. uh, come to light. All right. Well, we need to take a break. Um, but we will talk more about this and other stories as we look back on what will be the final episode of ring of fire radio in 2017. God, uh, what a very strange, uh, year. Uh, we will talk more about it with Digby when we return. I'm Sam Cedar. This is ring of fire radio.